Okay, everyone has a refrigerator, so everyone can learn from this video. So I'll start off just showing you how they work, then I'll teach you how to fix them. And I'll start off with the easiest problems first. All fridges have compressors, which is basically a pump. They put out up to 150 psi on the high pressure side. So what happens is when the fridge is running, Freon is pushed out through the smaller tube, and that goes to the radiator on the back, or the radiator can be underneath, or it can be a little one with a fan in it. And the hot Freon gas gets a chance to cool off, percolate itself down to the bottom, and it lays at the bottom as liquid Freon. Then it goes through a dryer filter thing. It can be all different sizes. And out of that comes what looks like just a little copper wire, but it's actually a hollow tube and that gives back pressure and restricts the flow of the liquid Freon and that tube is pretty long and it goes all the way up into the freezer box and that tube is called the capillary line well now we're inside the freezer box and that's where that capillary line attaches to it starts at the top when it flows into the larger diameter tube and that gives the gas or the liquid Freon a space so that it can expand and become a gas and when that happens it creates cooling. Then when it's done zigzagging its way down to the bottom it's completely turned all into gas again and then it comes back out and goes back to the compressor. That tube is the one that attaches to that radiator in the freezer. That's called the evaporator and this one's called the condenser. So the Freon gas has been warmed up somewhat, goes back in the compressor, gets compressed, and put back into the rear coil again. So that's basically how your fridge works. Now I'll teach you about all the problems. Most common problem with every fridge, which will happen eventually, is water building up in the bottom, or ice building up in the bottom. If you have a side-by-side -side fridge, then on the freezer side you'll have a glacier form in the bottom and the regular refrigerator like this one you just get a pool under there you can see this one has that problem and it was leaking out around the corner of the door and even making a wet spot on the floor where the water is supposed to go is a drip catch tray somewhere underneath the fridge or in a little bucket on the side or here right across the back and this is the tube that puts the water in and what happens is, on this model, the heat from the compressor evaporates the water so you never have to empty, empty it. Some fridges have a coil like this down underneath at the bottom and a big wide flat tray sits on there and the heat from the, that's dissipating from the Freon is what evaporates the water. The reason they have water is because it's a frost free fridge and twice a day, usually every 12 hours, a timer turns on a heating circuit which way down in that corner you can see what looks like a black tube well that's actually a heating element like the one on top of your stove it doesn't get quite as hot but it gets almost as hot and when the timer turns the power on it shuts the compressor off the heat rises and it melts all the ice that forms within every 12 hours on that cooling radiator and the water runs down and it's caught in a little funnel tray and it runs down usually through the refrigerator and it's caught into another funnel which is sometimes hidden by plastic stuff and then it exits down that black tube out the back I just showed you. So what happens with over time with the fridges is often mold forms somewhere in that tube or in that little catching trough right there and that blocks the water and this thing starts overflowing and as you can see this fridge had that problem that's why it has a stain down there. So first thing you do is just tug on this thing and remove it. Some fridges you have to unscrew it. And you put it in under the sink and rest one warm water on it and clean out all the crud that forms in it. And the next problem is there's a little elbow on the back where it turns and goes 90 degrees down there. It sometimes get clogged right at that elbow and when this thing's out, you might just have to stick something down there and poke it a little bit. If your fridge does have that removable little funnel, well then leave it removed and finish the process by finding the other end of the tube and blowing on that as hard as you can with your mouth. <laughs> Sometimes if you want to clean it off first, it's pretty disgusting. 
And what will happen is often a blob of mold will come blasting out the fridge from this side. Now if you have that side-by-side -side kind of fridge I mentioned that forms glaciers, well no amount of blowing with any amount of pressure is going to blow out the clog that forms in its little tube. They have a little tube that just comes out this little ledge underneath, not a long one that runs all the way up the back. And it usually has a little elbow in it, like a gooseneck, just to prevent air and stuff from getting in the fridge. It just keeps a little bit of water in it, water in it all the time. So what you have to do with those fridges is open up the freezer, turn off the fridge, and leave the freezer side open with no food in it for probably almost a day. Because even though the visible ice you're going to see that's laying at the bottom of the fridge melts, there's still ice inside that tube, and all around that tube where it passes through the walls of the fridge is well insulated, so it takes a long time for the ice to melt before it's clear enough you can blow it out. There's certainly no use paying a, a serviceman a big fee just to come to your house to do something that any homeowner can do. You don't really need any tools to do it with. Well, of course, what's the next biggest complaint? Well, my fridge or my freezer is not cold enough. It's the most common thing I hear for service calls. For very first thing you have to do is check that the fridge isn't pushed up against the wall. If this is touching the wall or has less distance than this away from the wall, this overheats and that makes your fridge run too warm inside. If your fridge is working correctly, when you're touching this after it's been on a while, the top part is hot, middle part is warm, and the bottom part is room temperature, and that means it's working correctly. If you ever touch your filter dryer and find out it's warm too, your fridge is definitely overheating. You may need to clean off this. This part may be underneath the fridge, and have a fan blowing on it and you may need to vacuum it all out from the front or the back and or and or while you're in there make sure that the fan is working correctly sometimes the fan motors seize up and sometimes just a piece of paper or debris on the floor gets caught in them and stops them from turning another reason why they overheat is people put them in too tight a space at the top even though there's enough space at the back so they can breathe back there there's no room at the top to let the hot air out that's just rising like a connect, convection flow. You should have a minimum of three to four inches above the fridge t for any proper installation. Unless it's a zero clearance fridge, those are the ones with the fan underneath I just mentioned, and zero clearance fridges work by sucking air in one side of the front end, moving it around through the condensing coil to cool it off, and blowing it out the other side of the front. These ones are more susceptible to getting dirty quicker, so they should be vacuumed out twice a year or blown out. If you do have one of those zero, zero clearance fridges and it has the fan underneath and you've removed the piece of cardboard or metal that's there and try to operate it that way, that causes it to overheat because that doesn't allow the airflow to flow through the loop way I just showed you. It'll just suck air freely through the back and sort of blow it out the side instead of push it through that condensing coil so it's very important to always put the cardboard back or the metal back on those kind of fridges sometimes they get ripped off while moving now the other reason where how you can fix your fridge if it's not cold enough and you don't need any technical skills either like the first couple problems I showed you is most frost free fridges have two temperature controls and almost everybody gets them confused in how they work one of the temperature controls doesn't always have to be in the freezer, but one always turns the fridge off and on. That's called the thermostat. That's how often it runs. For example, on, on this fridge, it happens to be in the freezer. The other control on all fridges controls an air door. I'll show you what I mean. There's a hole there, and cold air blows out of that hole into the fridge that the fan blows from the freezer, and that's the only way the fridge cools itself. Frost-free fridges don't have a cooling area inside of the refrigerator. It takes, they just steal cold air from the freezer. So what this do, how this works is, it's got a slot cut in it. And when you rotate it, it allows more or less air in the fridge. So you can often feel the air coming out from whatever plastic device or plate is near the hole. If you have your air door, if you have your air door closed. Well then obviously the fridge is going to become warmer because less cold air can blow up that hole. But it, at the same time will make the freezer colder. Another way to make both fridge and freezer colder but it costs more energy 
is just to turn the knob up higher and make the fridge run longer. So many people think when it says to turn that to make colder, they don't understand they're making the freezer colder and the fridge warmer, so they're turning it in the opposite direction for what they actually want. Most people actually want a colder fridge, not a colder freezer because usually everything's frozen. And it makes no difference. The most energy efficient way to adjust your refrigerator so it makes you happy and saves energy is to have the air door down in your fridge box maximum open so the fridge is getting the maximum coldness then if your food starts to freeze a little bit you can keep turning down the other knob which could be inside the fridge also until things just start to unthaw because you want your refrigerator part just above the freezing temperature and if, it, if at the same time when you check your freezer is still cold enough and your ice cream is still hard enough well then you may have found the perfect balance for the minimum amount to set it so it runs the least amount of time and still have both halves the right coldness for your liking. Well that's it for part one. Now you know how your fridge works and how you may be able to fix it without any tools or technical skills for some of the most common problems. On the next part of the series I'll get into actually how to fix any part of your fridge so if you're good with your hands you can do it. I can fix every fridge, why not you?